Now this is a monster job. I think he said we have 67 posts. I say we. They have 67 posts that they're gonna set. We're gonna basically follow them around to see how they get so much done in a day. One of the unique things is, is they're gonna wet set all their concrete. A lot of the people that are getting high numbers are doing dry pack. Victor's not doing that. And on this job here in particular, they've already removed all the fence. So let's see how they do today getting all these posts set with all the challenges they've got. There are two challenges. The first one is what everybody loves to do, and that is build a fence right next to an existing fence. This isn't quite as bad, but you have to worry about your auger getting into the neighbor's fence and making a mess of it. Now on the other side over here, there's some unique challenges as well. We have this driveway, driveway, and the fence, and it is barely going to be large enough for a vinyl fence post. Even getting your diggers in there is a challenge. All of these will have to be hand dug. Esta aquí, Micho. Hey, could you remind me? Josh said that the very first thing you did was some fence work, your very first, first fence job. job. So the very first fence job I did was cut the dividing fence between some rancher and in Mexico to get across. What if I get in trouble for saying that? You won't get in trouble, you, you did it right. You're legit now. So there's a story there. Victor came across illegally and then became legal. Now he is 100% legal and he actually has people that he helps bring across legally to do work with him. So I think that's pretty amazing that he has a story like that. He has built a very successful company despite his- The roughest time. <laughs> he likes to joke that his first fence job was cutting the fence to get here. The reason I think that he's able to do so much is because everything goes perfectly on all of his jobs. And <laughs> as a prime example of that, the first thing they did was pull this post this morning and totally rip out a sprinkler system, pipe that was in the concrete, and that, now they've got to deal with that. Everything isn't always perfect for Victor, just like it's not perfect for any one of us, I don't think. No. I didn't realize this, I just found out, but this job is going to be a complete install today. But they're going to dig, set, and install this entire job, 65 posts worth, in a day. So for all the people that know Victor Vasquez and have seen him on Facebook, we're gonna show you that I think not only does he talk the talk, but he walks the walk. This is a team of four people. I'm not going to help just because I don't wanna skew the results. I just wanna observe and see how these guys get it done. It's about efficiency, and when these guys get off the truck, they're working immediately. They're not trying to figure out what's going on. That's, I think, key number one. As you know, one of the things he's gonna do is he's gonna set it all out so he doesn't have to cut any rails. Set all of his sections to work perfectly with all the rail spacing and that just saves him even more time. You have 92. I don't know who did this layout. Oh, you better, you better go <laughs> yell at whoever sold the job. All right. He's gotta have a three-way somewhere and then he's trying to make all of his sections work out so he doesn't have to cut any rails. He's mad at a salesperson, which turns out to be him. You have any idea how hard it is to stand around and do nothing? I didn't realize how hard government workers' job really is, but it's really tough to stand around and do nothing. So when I saw this gap, I knew that that was gonna be a potential problem and I wanted to see how they were gonna solve it. They solved it with a big angle grinder with a masonry blade on it and this jackhammer. And they just took out enough right here to get their six inch auger down in there and give them enough room to work and clean the hole out. And all it took were these two tools right here. I think I'll be putting one of these on our trucks. It worked so good to get the concrete cut and it's a lot easier and cheaper than a concrete saw. I'm gonna guess a concrete saw is gonna cost you about 1200 bucks depending on which one you buy. And this is probably 200 bucks. So it's here just a little after 11 o'clock, 11.01, and all the holes are dug, all the posts are laid out in the holes, and they've got the ends all set. They have their string line up, and now they're gonna go back and they're gonna set all these in concrete. The way Victor likes to set everything up is he likes to have them mixing two batches of concrete at a time. So two wheelbarrows full, and they've always got their five gallon buckets full. And I wouldn't be surprised if they don't have most of these posts set before noon, which will definitely put them on track. I think I counted 54 or 55 sections and then the one gate. So I'm not sure what slump this is, but this is basically how they mix it. And they do that for two specific reasons. It's a lot easier to mix it when it's loose like this because your shovel flows right through it. 
The second reason I do that is because it flows around the post better and gets good bonding between the post. So there's a lot of people that would say that this is not adequate because it's gonna make weak concrete. I will agree that it's not going to make the strongest concrete that this could possibly be. But the other way of doing this that is oftentimes used is dry packing. And I would submit that this is going to be every bit as strong as dry packing. Ultimately, what we're trying to do when we do this, replace the dirt with the concrete, is make sure that it's getting at least as hard as the soil around it. That is really, our number one main function. And I will say that this will easily get as hard as the soil that is around this post. Is this gonna pass an engineer's mix design? And if you were on an engineered commercial spec project, would this work? Absolutely not. But will it work for a fence and will it hold the fence up? Uh, I would say yes. Tell us what you think. I'm dying to know. As you can see, the first step is to add a bunch of water. They're just gonna put a bunch of water in there so that it doesn't get really hard. And you can see how easy this is to mix up the way they're doing it. Another thing that I thought was interesting is if you come with me, I'll show you this. Don't spook him, but there's a bucket right here. And if you see on that bucket right there, there is a block screwed to the bottom of that bucket. It's because it gives them a nice handle on the bottom of the bucket in order to pour this in the hole. It's so that they can be really careful and not move the bottom of their post as they're pouring this in. So this way they get just the right amount in each hole and they have a lot more control using a bucket to put that in and it's a lot faster than a shovel. It's the silly things like a block on the bottom of a bucket that maybe you'll Oh my gosh, I had never even thought of that. I asked Victor what happens when they don't get it done to their schedule, and he said, no, we just, we just always get it done. That's impressive to me in and of itself, is that he never has to shift his schedule. They just always accomplish what they set out to in the morning. So you might notice that Victor wears these little paper clips <laughs> on his hat. I saw that the first day we interviewed him and I was thinking, what is this guy doing? And now it's all making sense. So he's using these paper clips to hold his string where he wants so that he can make sure that not only are they to the right height, but he'll make sure that they're tipped in or out and perfectly in line. So I go from end to end and then I see where all my posts are. So this one is just needs a little bit down. It would be just right off the ground there. So I think we're just gonna leave it. The only one that is high is that one. And that means that right there, we're just gonna trench a little bit of dirt, but we have a straight shot on the top. Everything else should be nice and astray. And the only place we're gonna trench is right there. This one will come down, this one will come down, that one will come up there, yeah. get it all. So you can see they didn't worry a whole lot about whether or not they were high or low when they set the initial post. They just made sure that the bottom was where they want it. Now they'll pull the top this way a little bit and they'll knock it down and they'll make sure that that line goes right across the top right here just like the rest of them so that it's a perfectly straight line. And bada bing. I don't know. I might need to redict this one. No, oh, maybe not. Now that we got all the ones that are high, we're just gonna start aligning everything to the edge of the string. It's nice and level. So when I was setting, we had the string on the bottom, and so essentially we just transfer it to the to the top, and in theory that should be level, which is. So then we're not checking level every single time. We just check the side and make sure that everything aligns to the string. Hey, Victor, it's a snake. Hey, hey, what's up? What is this? So, uh, you know, things do happen. Luckily, on my contract, it says that I'm not responsible for that. Yeah, because we can't avoid things that we can't see. I'll make sure they know. And I don't know, they say they were going to be doing their entire yard, so. Chances are we don't need to worry about it. There you go, it's pretty level. That's how we make them straight, guys. Everybody say, you should use eyeball it. I eyeball it. But, the same okay, thing. you eyeball it, but you go back and forth with just one shot and that's it. Cause I'm done here. I don't have to come back and look at it. But you had to go back and forth and set your string up. I don't have to do that. So how do you do it? I just eyeball it. Is it one person or two person? No, I can do it by myself. Let's, let me see. Yeah. You want me to do this one? Let's see it and then we run the string and see if it actually is All right. straight. With my reputation on the line, I set out to show Victor how it's done. Yeah. So I'm starting off from behind because I would already have all this done. See, when I set my posts, they're already lined up. Now all I have to do is go up and down. I mean, you're pretty good. Man, this is way out. So all I'm doing is looking off both sides of the post 
and trying to make all the other ones disappear. So I'm trying to line up these faces much like you'd sight a rifle. That's all I'm doing. And trying to come up with a line that lines up with all this stuff. Now we're ready to start height. And that took me, I don't know, that wasn't very long. Two, three minutes. Now I got that done. That would have already been done. Yep, okay. The hardest part is starting it. It goes without saying that this is easier if you're taller and you don't need a bucket. If I could just look over the top of these, that would be much better. Hey! I'm coming, let me see. It rolls off on the corner here, because otherwise you'd be pretty high right there at that corner. We could pick it up straight if you want, but it'd be kind of high. That's pretty good. That's how I do it. No string, don't need it. <laughs> no, it's good. I like it. I would have used a string and then I bought it. You just don't like the string. It's just in the way. Oh, come on, it's man. We do it the same way. We just like, okay. Here. So what you're going to do is you put your string up and the straight, yeah. and then you'd put it there, and then you'd kind of drop each one of these and kind of roll it, right? Yes, and then I just eyeball this one because you, you can see the peak. I'll spread that. Instead of doing just one, I mm -hmm. spread it over three of them. So it's really gradual. So this one's down a little bit, that one's down a little bit, that one's down a little bit, and it just kind of rolls. Like I say, when I put the posts in, I would already have it all in line this way, so all I have to do is go up and down. So that's what I'm saying. You know, when you put it in here, you still have to kind of do your ins and outs. My ins and outs are already done. It takes skill. <laughs> practice, lots of practice. It doesn't happen overnight. Oh, I bet. Yours is a lot easier way to train people to do. Because anybody can come over here and see if this thing's lined up. It takes a long time to train somebody to use their eye to do the same thing. So initially, when you're not good at it, it has a lot more errors and it takes a lot longer. But when you get good at it, we can actually probably beat a string. But training new guys, we teach them to use a string. It, it is 100% easier. You know what every job site needs? Freaking microwave. This is going to hit the spot and probably leave me incapacitated for the rest of the day. Ooh, this thing's smoking. Mmm. That's definitely diarrhea waiting to happen. Unfortunately for Victor, a good number of his rails were too long. And for a man who hates to cut rails, that's a big deal. So what we're doing now is we're going to take all these rails back. They loaded him up with six fours, and that would mean that we would have to cut a bunch of rails. And Victor is not about to cut rails. That is that is not the life he's about. So we're, we're going to spend $80 of fuel. Maybe maybe 90 or 100 because Victor cannot stand to cut rails. With Josh and me burning a tank of gas to go get shorter rails, Victor and his team didn't slow down at all. By the time we got back, Victor was practically done. So in Florida, we do a lot of these step down sections as well. Oh. And that's my favorite cutting tool for vinyl because it never chips. Anyhow, these angle sections are very popular in Florida. We'll go from a six foot down to a four foot. This might even be a three foot, but we'll step it down. And the reason being is, is in a lot of front yards, they have regulations on how high the fence can be. You may only be allowed to have a three and a half foot or four foot tall fence in your front yard once you extend past the front line of the buildings. That's why a lot of people do these. We do them a lot in the backyard where we go from a six foot fence, we'll step it down to a four foot and then we'll do aluminum in the very back. We see a lot of these transitions like this. 
And the best way to do that is exactly how you saw them doing that. Super fast, super easy. Oh, and don't forget to angle cut your rails so that it fits in here. Because otherwise you can see what happens if we hadn't angle cut that and these pieces were still on here, then it would run into the other rail and and it is 229. So if you remember right, we started this job roughly at nine o'clock when they were digging holes, the very first holes when we showed up this morning. They got started at 8.15 doing all their removal. They're gonna have this thing almost wrapped up. I would say by 3.30, an hour from now, this thing will be wrapped up. They'll be loaded up and down the road. And this is roughly 320 feet of fence. So that's pretty impressive. So what he's doing now is he's ripping the piece for the last picket in this section. But what a lot of people do is they take that drop that's yay wide and then they'll just discard it and throw it away. Some people will flip pickets back and forth and hopefully use that up somewhere down the road when they need a piece that wide. But Victor's thought is, is well, I'll just start my next section with that and then everything looks good because fits perfectly and it all blends in and it all looks great. It definitely saves a lot of material and it kind of goes along with his idea of not ever cutting any rails because he wants to eliminate as much waste on a project as possible to be the most profitable as he can be. Working like a crazy man sometimes comes with a cost though. When we were winding down the day, Victor's hand cramped up on him. What? Me dio una cramp en el dedo. Right here. I'm dead ass. Se me engarruña solo, So that's it. That's how Victor Vasquez, the fastest fencer in the West. What do you call that's yourself? The, the true fence king. Builds a fence. Now, this was 54 sections with a gate, and we calculated out the hours. Right. And we came up to 1.54 sections per man hour. That's too low. You're going to have to step it up. Yeah, we two. We need step two. It up. Actually, that's very respectable. So we joked, but that's a very fast fence. I was surprised with how well it went. Granted, the ground was, this is probably about as good as the ground it gets. Yes, this is good ground. Yeah, this is no way boulders. Good. If this is a boulder job, no way. No way. I don't way. see it pulling it off, but a good no. ground like this. Very respectable. No, it was probably 63, 65 posts, something like that. Yeah. A lot of posts, no one in the ground. A lot of posts. It's done. It's all done, guy. So that's how you do it. If you want to build fence fast now, one of the things you never saw in any of this is how many times did we brace your post while they were curing? Did we put the two by fours up both ways? No, no we don't do that. No, there not is at not all. a professional anywhere that is ever going to do that or recommend that. We've got to stop that. That's a true sign of a DIYer is somebody that braces Bracing that up. So just stop. The professionals don't do it, and there's a reason. And follow some of the secrets you learned from Victor Vasquez here and build your fence as fast as the fastest fence in the West. I'm Mark with SWI and I hope you've enjoyed watching this build. I'm Victor with all of our fans and I hope you guys learned something. Josh Rand with a little offense and you have a good dang day. Woo! <laughs> I, I did it wrong. <laughs> I cracked. <laughs> 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 <laughs>